Wake up, Blue Fire Nation. It's another Good News Friday. And welcome, everyone, to the Low Fi Poly Side Podcast. I'm your host, Michael Pickering. That's right. Low fives and low fidelity, low quality in your face, messy as can be global news show. And it's everyone's favorite day of the week. That's right. It's another Good News Friday. The news fresh off that press from the energy section of NPR. El Salvador plans to use electricity generated from volcanoes to mine Bitcoin. And look at El Salvador go. Yesterday, we talked about how El Salvador was leading the future by being the first country in the world to make Bitcoin legal tender currency in the country. And today, they're going all out and will use geothermal energy harnessed from a volcano to mine their Bitcoin. And in case you didn't know, mining Bitcoin takes a large amount of computing power and consumes a lot of energy. It's really one of the big arguments against it for not being environmentally friendly for how much energy it consumes. However, it appears El Salvador even has a plan for that. Well played, El Salvador. Well played. Next up, Source, Entertainment section of AP. The Unanswered Jeopardy question. Who's the next host? I saw this one and just couldn't help myself. I had mostly forgotten about Jeopardy altogether since last year. But now, I surely am curious. Who will be the next host? And I'll go ahead and tell you, if you see this article out there, don't waste your time and click it because they don't give you an answer. So instead, I'll put the question to you, Lo-Fi Nation. Who do you want to see as the next host of Jeopardy? I'm personally rooting for either LeVar Burton or Mayim Balik, who are both in the running. Now, moving forward because we never move on from anything. Source, the BBC Science section. Mighty Jupiter Moon, Gamamede, pictured in Up Close. You know how much I love spacey pictures, and this is just so cool. Gamamede, Jupiter's largest moon. One of four moons, by the way. How cool would it be if we had four moons? But we got some new pictures, people, and definitely check them out. Gamamede is also the largest moon in our solar system. But how big is that exactly? How big is Jupiter's moon of Gamamede compared to the Earth? I'll give you a five count. And five, four, three, two, one. And the answer, oh, it's a daily double. That's right. Get this one correct and you get double the lo-fi poly side points for the week. You see, maybe I could be Jeopardy host as well. But if you said 0.41 times the size of Earth, or rather, just under half the size of Earth, you are absolutely correct. And that's a massive moon, to be sure. Again, check out the pictures, people, and learn more about our solar system. And our following story comes from NPR Science Section. What causes the northern lights? Scientists finally know for sure. Oh, really now? For sure, you say? I thought we already knew this, but I like it when sciencey folk folk improve upon our knowledge even more. But a question to you, lo-fi listeners out there, and another five count to see if you know. What does cause the northern lights, also known as Aurora Borealis? And five, four, three, two, one. And our answer? Begin quote. The natural light show starts when disturbances on the sun pull on Earth's magnetic field. That creates cosmic undulations known as alvein waves that launch electrons at high speeds into Earth's atmosphere, where they create the aurora. End quote. And there you have it. This was the theory of many people before, but now we've been provided the evidence to shore up that theory. Read the article to find out exactly how our clever sciencey folk did so. And a last piece of news to send you on your way for the weekend. Source, Reuters Science Section. Tiny creature comes back to life after 24,000 years in Siberian deep frost. Oh, and before you start thinking we've now unlocked the key to cryogenically freezing ourselves to leapfrog through time, know that this was a very tiny Itsy bitsy little creature, a multicellular organism that reproduced asexually and did so once it woke up from its 24,000 year nap. Imagine that, taking a nap for 24,000 years, and then waking up to see that people are no longer living in caves. If we were to take a nap for 24,000 years, starting today, What do you think we'd find when we woke up? Would the machines have taken over? Or would it be more like Planet of the Apes? Or would it be all lovey-dovey like Star Trek? 
I'm curious your thoughts. And that's it. I'm done. I'm out for the weekend, but you know how to find me. Always remember that Lo-Fi Poly Sci is more than just me. It's the week that we be. Peace and well-being to all my human beings out there. Much love and always the best. Pickering, signing off. <laughs>